Welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. You know, today, Senator Goswell Ababio, the so called senior president of this country, have come out to embarrass himself and apologize to Nigerians. You know, he thinks that supporting Balame Tinibu because Balame Tinibu compensated him for supporting him and for helping him, you know, do whatever thing they did in Akwai Bomb State and, you know, gave him the senior president, gives him the right to, you know, do all sorts of things. And today, he has come out to start crying out and apologize. And remember, this lover. You know, a few days ago, started releasing some information about him, which we know that probably those information we are not, you know, uh, we are not verified and cool. But the masses and the way Nigerians put pressure on him, he, he came out to apologize. Look at this particular man. I'm going to sh play the video so you can listen to what he said and the apology he gave. Look at a, a woman, Sinton Natasha, came out, you know, who wanted to speak at the House of Assembly. And what Goswin Ababio had to tell him is that, he told her is that uh, this is not a nightclub that she should sit down and not speak anything. He does not want the opposition to say anything and this is the caliber of people that are ruling in this country it's it's, it's still the same this senator gospel abio that you know shut up a king uh of uh, the, that's the minister uh, the fct minister when the MS FC, fct minister suggested as a matter of fact that they should rebuke or rebuild a particular plaza that you know was burnt senator gospel ababio you know said no the same Senator Goswila Ababio was the person that said that anything that Tinibu demands, if Tinibu wants to buy a plane or anything, that he's going to approve it. This is a full time rob and stamped Senate. I'm going to play the video so I can see how he was apologizing. Even to the extent that he said that his wife was you know, distressed, that people are calling his wife, doing you know, all sorts of things. Let me play the video so I can listen. That's why I always tell people keep on putting pressure on these politicians. Most of them are not what, you know, having any political position. Most of them are in those political positions because of what? Compensation, because they, I helped you to win an election in this area and you must compensate me. That is what Tinibu did. Most of his political appointees and all the people, ministers, all of them, are not technocrats. These are, these are people that does not that, that are not competent these are people that he went to you know comp uh, compensate because they helped him to win the election let me play the video so i can listen to the apologies and all the things he was saying we'll come back with we'll dissect and analyze everything further so we'll do well to continue to learn but in the course of my uh, uh talking to one of my distinguished sisters that she should uh speak whenever she's uh recognized I made reference to the fact that we are not in a, a nightclub where people have to shout above the noise of the music. And the social media went agog. I'm not on social media, but my wife called me that people got angry. They published her number and said people should occupy her. So she used to receive she received over 2,000 to 3,000 phone calls a day. And then I tried to own one of my phones. I realized it was in the public. In fact, the phone crashed after about three hours. So I, I, I am very happy with the interest generated by Nigerians in what goes on in these chambers because we are here to cater for their interests. And uh, so for them to uh to be so interested in what goes on here means that we are connecting with the people directly and it would have been terrible if we were doing all this work and the people were not even aware of what we are doing but the communication was totally misunderstood instead of taking it for the uh, nature of what we said that you should not shout when you are talking and not uh, and speak when you are recognized. They went into private uh, abuses. I don't want to say what they did to me because uh, what they did to me, I think I don't merit it. I was telling DSP that it's even the one they should be talking to because in my tradition, we marry only one wife. So they listed so many wives on social media <laughs> and uh, at the end it will look as if the senate president had or has so very wise when indeed i'm reporting to my colleagues i have only one and uh, i'm satisfied with that one and uh, she's a, a beautiful and loving woman i will not intentionally denigrate any woman i have a wife i have four daughters and i always pray that uh, god will lift a girl child to the highest zenith in Nigeria. 
politically and in business. I also want my children to do well. So this is Senator Natasha. I want to apologize to you if you felt offended. If I had mentioned that we are not in the market, they will say I said you are in market well. I, if I said that you were not in a nightclub where people shout above the noise of the music, they will say you went to nightclub. If I said you were not in a community uh, uh, meeting in the village, they will say Apavio says Natasha is a village woman. For me, there is nothing I will say that will not be misunderstood. But the interest generated in the social media, people jumped in, shows that you have a lot of political enemies. It also shows that I do have enemies. All of us here contested elections with people. So whenever those people think that you are being brought down, they will jump up and they will say all sort of things. So from the video, you could hear Gospel Ababi was saying that he was sorry that he never meant to, you know, make such kind of utterance against Senator uh, Natasha. But that is that. You could see him saying that, uh, that he has only one wife because just love accused him of having multiple side chicks and co, you know, mentioned some names of uh, alleged side, side, chicks, side, side chicks and all that. So he came out today and said that he only has one wife and is satisfied with his one wife, that his wife received about 2,000 to 3,000 calls every single day, you know. And this is the kind of pressure we need to be mounted on these people because most of them are reckless. Most of them, especially this Senate president, Gosla Babi, one of the worst Senate presidents we've ever seen. They are, they are all, he makes all sorts of careless comments and utterances. The number three citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria cannot coordinate himself and speak effectively and judiciously. You know, he keeps on talking anyhow just because he believes he's defending Bola Metinibu. It is quite shameful that we have this caliber of people ruling us. But that is that for that. You know, today, uh, P2B came in support of uh, Dangote. Remember, over the few days ago, Dangote has been ranting, shouting how the federal government and how some cabas in NMPC want to sabotage his uh, uh, oil refinery in Lagos State, that they, that they don't want it to you know, become operational full, uh, fully. He started seeing all sorts of things that even some NMP, NMPC operatives you know, have some uh, mixing or blending uh, mixing uh, company in Malta, in the country known Malta, where they mix inferior products and bring in to the country and sell to us. There is not that good to have not said about the uh, international oil companies, IOCs and co. This was a man that did not come out fully to come and support a person, a business person like P2B that would definitely know and understand you know, what business is all about. But Peter B came out today, you know, to lend his support for uh, Aleku Dangote, you know, to, 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 to tell the federal government, as a matter of fact, that they should not uh, sabotage his effort because what they are trying to do to him is to sabotage him and make sure that that refinery is not functional. This is a refinery that is going to help the country. We all, we all know that this refinery will definitely help the country. But Dangote, as a matter of fact, should understand that elections and the choice of leaders have consequences. You cannot with your influence and you keep short. All these years, because probably you've been enjoying from the previous government, or because you believe that you will keep on enjoying from Balame Tinibu's government. That is why, because now he has seen that this Tinibu's government is not even favoring anybody. So he, he has now started speaking out. Of course, all these years and all this why a lot of people believe that he has been favored by the previous government. Now he has started uh, shouting. Now, don't get us wrong. We want this refinery to work effectively because it is going to benefit everybody. But this is one mistake most of our political, uh, most of our business elites and in big men do in the country. During elections, they will keep their mouth short. They will not say anything. They will be looking for maybe one or two corrupt leaders that will actually, you know, support their businesses and make it thrive at the expense of more than more, millions of people. They will see an effective person that, will, that can help, you know, help them in everything, but they will not elect the person. Rather, they will find someone else to elect that will actually, you know, give them a lot of uh, special treatment. But now, you know, Tinibu economy or probably Tinibu's uh, policies are affecting both the rich, the poor, and the average. Everybody is crying. Look at what P2B said in support of uh, this particular man being uh, uh, Aliku Dangote. P2B, you know, made a post because a lot of, uh, he has been crying out a, a lot this day. So P2B made a post and he said something, as you can see on the screen. P2B said, so P2B said something, as you can see on the screen, he said Dangote refinery should be fully supported and not vilified. He said the recent conflicts between Dangote industries and some government agencies are deeply troubling. This issue transcends political affiliations and personal grievances. It is fundamental. It is fundamentally about Nigeria's economy and future. He said something. He said, and the well-being of its citizens. Given Alaji Dangote's significant contributions to Nigeria, it is crucial that these, these disputes are resolved swiftly. 
He said government agencies should be directed to offer the necessary support for the seamless launch and operation of the Dangote refinery and its associated enterprises. He said the refinery has the potential to generate approximately $21 billion in annual revenue and create over 100,000 jobs with numerous additional positive impacts on the economy. He said it is strategic. It is strategic import importance in addressing Nigeria's fuel crisis, boosting foreign exchange earnings and fostering economic, economic growth cannot be overstated. The refinery is too vital to fail and must not be hindered considering its crucial role in our nation's welfare.